This is Anvil, a company that is focused on engineering, research, and development of affordable solutions for clean transportation and electric drive systems. This team developed some really cool drive system kits for snow, water, and land. Recently, they developed and are coming to the market with new microelectric vehicles that are impressive and will fit perfectly in our day lives activities, making them more efficient. Envo is entering the e-bike market with interesting e-bike collection. Today, we'll be testing their new road electric bike. This is the new Envo Stax that looks impressive in person, not so much on a website. This e-bike looks, rides, and feels like a normal bike. You can remove the assist and have that natural pedal feel or unleash the maximum power and have a fast, aggressive e-bike. Specs. We have a 500 watt rear hub motor, super compact, and we have here 36 volts, 700C by 40 millimeters tires. It looks like a regular road gravel bike, super sleek frame, you can't see any of the welds, it's all smooth and very nicely done. Painted beautifully. I like this, uh, you know, two-tone color they've chosen. And the battery, usually these tubes are very thick. This is so much thinner. And here we have 36 volts, 12.8 amp hour capacity or 460.8 watt hour. We have the charging port right here under, which is uh, at the beginning I thought it was gonna be difficult to, to access, but it's actually not. It's very easy, you just pop this up, open it and connect, plenty of space here. And the tube is very thin, very narrow. I'm 6'3", when I saw this frame initially, and when I got it, I thought it was gonna be medium, it's gonna be small for me, but it's actually very comfortable. You can lift this higher, and you can see my posture, it's not bad. It's actually comfortable. The bike stock weighs only 42 pounds, pretty sleek design. So we're gonna start with the zero assist and see how much speed you can develop and if it's easier not to ride with no assist at all. And uh, I forgot to shift. Yeah, it feels like a regular bike. It's, it's red light, pass it. It is uh, just uh, slightly harder to start, but it feels like a regular bike. There's not much resistance. I can pedal and uh, yeah, this is pretty good. Let's stop and go in the first level assist. About 11, 12 miles an hour, <clears throat> 13, 12. So I'll say 12 miles an hour. Let's go second speed. Not much difference, 14, 15. Third speed, the assist is much more powerful, so I have to shift down. Let's go fourth. And fifth. And the fifth level, the assist is so much powerful, you have to shift down or start pushing more because it's just so much easier. Comfortable pedaling, not putting too much pressure. About 20, 21 miles an hour. The bike is so much more nimble and a fifth speed level accelerates really, really fast. Getting from five miles to 20, 22 miles an hour, it's so much faster. It feels really quick, really aggressive, almost like a racing bike. This bike allows you to have so much adjustability. You can remove completely the assist and use the regular bike. It's not difficult to pedal once you start going and picks up speed really fast. If you, let's say, went for a longer ride day before and you're sore and you want to recover, put in a fifth level assist and barely put any pressure, the bike will give you the option to go 20 plus miles an hour still. I did the test uh, in a fifth level assist and I was able to cover 30.8 miles in range, which is incredible and I didn't put too much effort let's say medium to low assist of course i weigh 220 pounds if you're lighter you'll get so much more range this bike here really gives a chance to go really aggressive and ride fast and burn the battery you know much quicker or just relax and you know pedals regular bike between 15 to 20 miles an hour and cover 40 50 plus miles in range it depends also on your weight terrain and so many more variables but if you're under 200 pounds you'll get closer to advertised numbers. Okay, uphill. Let's see how it does. 
Okay, I'm gonna be pushing too much. Just to give you guys an idea. Six speed in the back. And I'm pushing really hard and it's 19 miles an hour. So easy, 19, 20 miles an hour, the bike does pretty well without pushing hard. We have nice cranks here, big size chain ring. All the cables are routed through the frame. Even the front brake goes into the fork. So really nicely done, clean handlebars, nice Shimano, I think it's MT200 uh, hydraulic brakes. Good shifter, very crisp shifting, precise setup, perfectly out of the box. We have this very small compact console and has all the buttons and the screen all together. So when you power it on, you have the battery, the voltage, speed, watts consumed in real time and how much you cover so far. And we have five levels of assist. Very nice screen, very easy to read in the sunlight. I like that the screen is actually integrated with the console. So it's only one place to adjust the settings. There's nothing else on the handlebars besides the grips, the shifter, the lever for the brakes. And that's pretty much it. This is my P design mount, which I added after I got the bike. But here, look, you have all the buttons uh, and the screen in one console. So you have here plus and minus, so you can adjust the speed, press this button, you can go for this uh, numbers. And here we have on and off button. Very compact, right next to your thumb and your fingers, so we can easily ride without taking your eyes off the road and adjust really quickly, very convenient. When it comes to size, when I got initially, I thought this is gonna to be too small for me. It looks like medium, but if you play with uh, adjustments, height of the seat post, the battery here, and you have adjustability here, you can play with the stem, you can get the different aftermarket stem and raise the angle, get a longer, shorter, so you can really adjust this uh, frame. And I feel like now there's a trend, there's a lot of electric bikes and regular road bikes having a shorter wheelbase. Not sure why for me, I thought it was going to be uncomfortable. I really thought that I'm screwed up and, and you know, this model is just too small for me. But after riding 50 plus kilometers and once I lifted the, the seat higher, it's really well set up. It's really fast. And uh, for me, what's important here is as long as my foot is extended 100%, I feel comfortable. I can shift the seat. I can play with the front and back adjustability and it's, uh, it's working pretty well. And I think for somebody who's between five feet up to six five, this frame will work very well and here the seat post, you can extend more. I am above the limit here, almost an inch, uh, but the battery goes all the way almost to the bottom here, so you can go higher, and this clamp is pretty sturdy, so if you go a couple inches higher, it'll be still fine. It's a sporty design, racing, you know, geometry, but uh, as long, for me at least, as long as I have enough uh, length here to extend my leg, just rides well. Feels more nimble, better contact with the road, more dynamic, feels more responsive for me. For off-road, you need wider, longer wheelbase. For road riding, I think it's not needed. The seat is the Vivo from Settler Royale. It's very narrow, so if you cover, you know, 50 to 100 kilometers a day, you'll have discomfort. This seat is pretty, you know, comfortable, pretty well done, but still, longer range distances, you'll definitely need padded shorts. The bike looks really, really cool. I'm not sure if the video is gonna, you know, really, translate how it looks in the person. The paint job, it's exceptional, really cool. And you can add fenders in the front and the back. They also sell uh, the rear rack, which you can uh, turn this into commuter. This bike is super sleek, just beautiful. But there's one area that needs attention and can be improved. Wiring here. This big connector can be replaced for something more compact. And all this wire access can be, you know, reduced. So that alone will shave Couple of hundred grams to improve the bike handling. And I'm not sure if the control is here or inside the battery tube, but uh, making all this uh, area more compact will look better. This can be integrated more better inside and hidden. So, you know, having less wires, less weight will improve the bike. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys realized, a lot of bikes have uh, the bottom bracket, you know, and the same line with the tube or in front, this is in the back. So you have slightly different feel 
I quite like it. It's uh, comfortable for me. I mentioned that. It's completely different uh, compared to other bikes. If you like to lose weight, stay fit and healthy, ride faster and have more dynamic ride, then this is the bike for you. It is priced at $1,999 US dollars, slightly higher than the Veltric T1 and 10 Ways 600 Pro, but it has its own character. It is faster, but compared to Specialized, Trek or Cannondale, it is priced way lower. You have high level components, well balanced, good quality overall. The link will be down below in the description box. Check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.